Dear students, in this module, I'm going to show you the possibilities that exist if you try to fold a protein given its amino acid sequence. So computing this is going to be a huge challenge as we will just see. You know that we are studying this in order to understand how disease comes about and how misfolded proteins can actually reduce the effect of drugs and so on and so forth. So it's a very important area of protein informatics. And for that, we first have to know how to fold a protein. So given an amino acid, you polymerize it with another amino acid and so on and so forth. You have an amino acid polypeptide and this polypeptide folds onto itself for a 3D structure. How many different ways exist for this polypeptide to fold and take 3D forms? It is a huge computational problem because there are so many different possibilities that a protein chain, that an amino acid chain can fold on to itself and therefore it is going to be computationally expensive. Let's assume for now that every amino acid can participate in just three types of structural elements within the overall structure of protein. So I will elaborate on these examples later but for now just assume that there are three different structural units. So if an amino acid can say, let's take alpha helix. So if an amino acid can take the form of an alpha helix or a beta sheet or a loop. So one amino acid can take at least these three forms. And also, we know for a fact that there are 20 different amino acids. Now, if you were to look at the protein sequences, you will know that protein sequences are very long. They comprise of hundreds of amino acids and sometimes thousands. So if each amino acid can take three different structural forms, and that there are 20 amino acids and that you have a protein with hundreds of amino acids each then computing the possibilities of how many structural components can be created is very difficult here i show you how many possible combinations can exist so if each amino acid can take three different conformations and let's say a sample protein has a hundred amino acid for this example, then the possibilities that exist will at least be 100 to the power 3. So this equates to 5 into 10 to the power 47. That is a massive number of combinations. Just imagine the case. If you were to consider a protein with 1000 amino acids, a relatively large protein, these combinations would increase exponentially. So if you were to look at the protein folding options, you're going to look at so many options. So how are you going to find your way to the correct option? So this is a very interesting question. If you have a computer that is going to calculate these 5 into 10 to the power 47 different combinations and let's for an, for an example say that it takes a tenth of a nanosecond to actually compute one combination then it will take you 1.6 into 10 to the power 30 years to compute all the possibilities for just one protein of a hundred amino acid length. We know that proteins may be of thousands of amino acids and we know that there are close to a million proteins 
in Uniproc database. So therefore, how are you going to spend 1.6 into 10 to power 30 years in just computing one structure? I'll tell you an interesting fact that these many years, this much time, is actually greater than the time, the age of our entire universe. So, you see, this is almost impossible to address. So, how do the proteins manage to fold themselves then? Right? So, if we were to compute all these options, it took us so much time. While for the protein, it seems to be spontaneous. It seems to be trivial. And more so, the exact time for a protein to fold varies between a microsecond to a single or maybe a few seconds. So within this period, a protein can completely fold, package itself and ready for functioning within the cell. This is of course amazing because if you were to do it using a computer, it will take you time that is equal to or greater than the age of your universe combined. So how do these proteins do that? So this was a dilemma that is there and Anfinson proposed that the overall energy of a protein is computed. If you look at this figure, so if you have moved as a protein to this position in the energy landscape, then you would want to ignore all of these energy states that are higher and only consider those that are lower. And once you have moved to a place even lower, then you will only consider the states that are lower than the current one. So in this way, you can optimize your search by limiting the options available to you. So if a structure is more unstable, then you just simply ignore it and you take up the stable structure in its favor. So this is also called Leventhal's paradox and we will try to understand this folding process using experimental and uh, wet lab data sets. So this process is usually studied in something called molecular dynamic simulation and we are going to do it later.